and moral superiority, but intellectual superiority is right there. Mm -hmm. In other words, um, I, you know, I think Richard Hofstetter famously said that uh, when he was thinking about conservatives, he couldn't think of any idea worth even mentioning. And it was mm -hmm. like so far beneath their intellectual level. Mm -hmm. they, they, uh, the only people who were doing any thinking worth considering was mm -hmm. were, was the left, mm -hmm. and the this left. was the Jewish left, mm -hmm. basically. Well, uh, uh, so it was a social science with a political agenda. Any scientific value at all, or basically uh, <laughs> a lot of uh, smoke and mirrors? Uh, and well, I wrote a whole long uh, chapter on the authoritarian mm -hmm. personality, and I think it's completely muddle-headed. Mm -hmm. And psychologists from day one, I mean, that one of the most interesting things about this mm -hmm. is if you go back into the 50s, right after it was published, mm -hmm. you had well-known, very, you know, competent psychologist mm -hmm. saying, looking at the, these, these scales don't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, there's nothing here. Uh, but it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. You see, that, and that's the thing about psychoanalysis, too. If you go back, you can, go, you can find guys in around 1912 say, where's the evidence? Mm -hmm. Where, where's the data? Well, the same thing with Freud, of course. Yeah, right? that's what I'm saying. Psychoanalysis, mm -hmm. they, that there was no data for, that, for the Oedipal complex, mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. And so they went for 100 years mm -hmm. without feeling any need to come up with any data. It's one of the, that, that is one of the most amazing stories in science, in the history of science, mm -hmm. that you have uh, this movement that retains its momentum, this huge influence in the media. Mm -hmm. Think of all the movies that were made in the 30s, right, 40s, right. 50s, 60s, that were psychoanalytic in, in inspiration. Right. Well, the, you know, it fits a pattern that you describe in your book, and that is a lot of these Jewish movies, they have one person who's charismatic, he's right. authoritarian, yeah. and all the disciples are treat him like a god, am I right? right. Yeah. Am I paraphrasing yeah, that, that That's exactly right. Then that's that, happened that with is another Floyd, Mark, common. maybe not Marx, but a lot of the subsequent uh, well, comments. Marx tried right. too, but, right. but yeah, Boas mm -hmm. had this coterie of, of people who just worshipped him. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the, from their point of view, he was the most important intellectual ever, mm -hmm. you know, period. I mean, uh, how Aristotle how did, take a back How did uh, Judaism in general and Zionism and all the other things escape this sort of scrutiny as far as it being also ethnocentric, which they were at one point right. decrying among Gentiles, but apparently uh, looking the other way when it came <laughs> to Jews. How do they manage that, that intellectual feat? And we're, well, we're still seeing that, aren't we? I mean, uh, that is one of, another one of the major stories mm -hmm. here, that uh, when, it, when it comes to ethnocentrism, mm -hmm. we are constantly being told, I mean, if you look at the authoritarian personality, it's a fascinating example. They're talking, you know, they interview someone and he says, and he says, I don't like Jews or something like that. But they never talk about Jewish ethnocentrism. I mean, there's a whole... They don't talk about Jewish ethnocentrism? Yeah, they get a 900-page book, and there's not one mention mm -hmm. of Jewish ethnocentrism. Only, only yes, Gentiles. Jewish ethnocentrism, you know, is the only thing that really kept them together for, for 3,000 years or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and, and um, when, if you look at, at the vanguard, mm -hmm. the settler movement in Israel, uh, a lot of overtly very racialist stuff. We mm -hmm. are superior... Uh, you know, non-Jews are like animals compared to us. Well, is this the Talmud yeah. or something, or, other, or later? later? I'm talking about the settlers. I mean, a lot of these oh, people the right oh, now. in Israel. Yeah, in Israel, yeah, in Israel that, that these people uh, have these ideologies. Well, yeah. But it never, you never, uh, the, the ethnocentrism right. is, is palpable. It's, I mean, buried, it's right it's there. It's very, yeah. Uh, now, I want to move on to the literary world, yeah. another, another Jewish intellectual movement. Uh, cultural movement, let's say, literary, and that is the New York intellectuals. Uh -huh. Now, who were they? When was their heyday, and are they still with us? <laughs> well, uh, they are with us to, in, in a sense. I think the um, the heyday was the, the uh, for, for, you know, I'd say from the late 1930s through, mm -hmm. through the 50s. Mm -hmm. You had you had journals like the Partisan Review. Mm -hmm. You know, and you had uh, edited by you know, Philip Roth and um, Rob and Philip. And these people. Well, Philip Roth and name some others. No, well, I'm not saying. No, his name is Rob. R A H P. Um, and and um, th that that was the center of it. Mm -hmm. And um, but it was extremely prestigious. This was not these people did not have PhDs necessarily, but it, it grew up to have this incredible prestige mm -hmm. and, and a really big influence in the literary world. Mm -hmm. and, um, and does it fit that pattern where you have a handful of glorified people with a kind of you, of you certainly show? have a, this 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 strong net uh, sort of you know, ethnic networking. You know, where people are pushing things. each other. Um, people like. Um, Seymour Martin Lipset was a, was a sociologist. You had, you had uh, Clement Greenberg, the art critic. Mm -hmm. You had, um, and there's a sort of second, you know, second generation people like Saul Bellow. Mm -hmm. uh, and see, the, 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 the influence now, because these people became anti Stalinist left. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the other thing that we sort of forget here is that even though most Jews, say in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 
on the left mm -hmm. were with the Stalinist, you know, left. But you had a very robust anti-Stalinist left, and they mm -hmm. were, and they became more anti-Stalinist, mm -hmm. um, although less so than because anti-Semitism, anti-Jewishness started to emerge. I think that was Soviet a big part of it, but you know, certainly people started to be aware of the crimes of Stalin, and we became indefensible, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. Now and these movements uh, have become fundamentally irrational. Some of these movements. That's what you said. I think. I think that. Well, you look at psychoanalysis. That's what I'm saying. They're rational in the sense mm -hmm. that they're. They pose as science, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they're not. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and that's a classic example. Or look at the authoritarian personality, the mm -hmm. convoluted, the, these, these scales that don't make any sense. Mm -hmm. the, the fact that only right-wing conservative people can be prejudiced when you see these left left wing people who are mm -hmm. obviously bigoted in various ways, you know. Right, so mm -hmm. it, it became a, a, it was obviously a politically motivated program. You look at Boazian anthropology, it's the same kind of thing where, um, it was like anti-science. Mm -hmm. It was like, we're not going to have any sort of systematic investigations of culture until we can completely get a theory. But they never got a theory. So you just have all these you know, infinitely uh, variegated cultures, and they're mm -hmm. sort of there, and that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. But you stop thinking in terms of trying to explain those cultural mm -hmm. differences. What about mm -hmm. genetic differences, mm -hmm. for example? Not part of the game anymore. Uh, now I what about warfare? Not part of the game. Mm -hmm. Now I want to move to more contemporary issues. Of course, uh, we're at war right now. To what extent are Jewish interests? We were to cover well, this. I've just written a long, a being, long uh, thing. Being about furthered it. by a war in Iraq. We're, we're getting low on time. Oh, we're getting low on, on a one to ten. <laughs> okay. Well, um, the, the main thing is that uh, you know this this is the work of the neoconservative movement, mm -hmm. and um, at the very center of the neoconservative mm -hmm. movement, you have uh, you know these these very important think tanks, mm -hmm. American Enterprise mm -hmm. Institute. Mm -hmm. uh, is uh, perhaps the main one, but right. also the uh, Jewish Institute for National Security Affairs. Mm -hmm. You have uh, APAC. You know, you have the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. Mm -hmm. But then you have, um, you know, the, the very important uh, f figures in the media. You know, like Bill Kristol, editor of, um, of the Weekly Standard. Um, but what about you know, even the mainstream? All, all the mainstream publications, so from the New York Times down. Don't they kind of sanitize they, they certainly do. They certainly do. and make acceptable the idea of Zionism, which is basically very much like what we once decried in South Africa? They kind of make it acceptable. I mean, well, is, there, it, is there, it that there, pervasive? There's a, there's a consensus. But, but let's talk about neoconservatism. Yeah. I think that, that the, the main time. influence of, of neoconservatism uh -huh. uh, is within the Bush administration. Right. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have this support group of, of media, yeah. think tanks, and all that. But the main people are people like Paul Wolfowitz, mm -hmm. Douglas Feith. Right, right. Uh, uh, Abrams, Elliot yeah. Abrams, mm -hmm. um, Sholsky, and so on. In other words, these are the people who are pushing the policy. Today. But today. let's face it, if, if, if it goes to the other side, we're going to see war coming from the Democrats. That's my last word. <laughs> okay. Kevin I wouldn't McDonald, doubt that. We're, we're out of time. It's okay. been splendid having you with us. Yeah. And I want to thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Flashpoint. I'd, I'd like to do